first I got Garrett Sullivan. Garrett's a senior. All three of these guys are seniors, but Garrett's a senior linebacker. Uh, he uh, will play down a D line every now and again. Um, but this is uh, this is year three as a starter for us. Um, I actually played a little bit as a freshman um, when he first came up, and uh, we're excited about him and, and uh, uh, his development. He's uh, got a lot stronger and a lot faster and so forth. That was one of those things as a baby. He's always had the physical part of it, but it was just the, the speed thing and so forth. But he's, we're excited about Garrett. Um, uh, Gunner Newbern, um, you might see him listed as Charles uh, Newbern, but uh, Gunner is a uh, offensive lineman. He's our starting. Uh, you're the left tackle, right? So. Um, left tackle, and uh, this is year three starting for him. Um, unfortunately, last year we lost Gunner halfway through the year to a uh, torn Achilles, and um, partially torn. It wasn't a full tear, thank goodness. But uh, so we lost him. I think it was the McGill game, week five, and um, so we thankful we got him back and um, so forth. And then Tim Trotter, Timmy Trotter, Timmy. This is year two as a starter for him. Uh, plays DB. Um, and we'll play some on the other side at wide receiver and so forth as well. But um, we're excited about these guys. Uh, again, Timmy, um, he's the kind of guy that when he got here with us uh, as a freshman, um, you know, he was uh, a smaller stature. He was, you know, skinny um, and so forth. And, and he has put in probably more work than anybody um, in the weight room and, and transforming his body in the last two years. And, and um uh, we're excited about him. He's one of our um, interns as well at Auto Kempu during the summer. So we don't get to see him. He's working in a steel mill right now. And uh, I told him uh, the other day when I sent the message, and I said, I want you to come with us. Um, you know, and I said, you got to tell your boss, you got to take the day off now. And uh, so anyway, he's, he's, he, I think he's happy about being off today other than he's not getting his pay, uh, he's not getting paid today necessarily. So, but, uh, but we, again, we're excited about Timmy and, and the prospects for the year. Tell us about the prospects for the year. How do you feel about uh, Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of that, that weird question. Um, and, and the reason being is, you know, we've been in 6A the last two years. Um, and it has been a struggle. Uh, we're not, we, you know, I can't, sugar, I can't sugarcoat that any other way around it. Um, the year, the first year in 20, we knew we had a chance to be competitive in 6A because of the senior class that we had that year. Um, we were set up. If you look back in, in, in 18 and 19, you know, we, we made the playoffs in both years. We came in second and 19. We were getting ready to get the thing steamrolling. Um, and then all of a sudden, our enrollment jumps and they put us in 6A. Um, so we were, we were positioned at that point, I thought, to be really, really successful in 20. Um, as a 5A, we get put in 6A, and obviously, you know, it is what it is. We knew we were going to be competitive with those guys in 20, but 21 I knew was going to be the struggle. That was going to be the struggle because these guys were all young still. And so they're, you know, so anyway, long story short, we're, we're sitting here now, um, you know, people call the 6A Region 1, you know, the SEC of the, you know, the West, SEC West. Well, it is, you know, and, and all they did to us was move us from the west side to the east side. We're, we're back in the SEC East now, you know, so um, it doesn't get any easier by no means. Um, so the, the thing that we're, we're excited about is we can compete. You know, again, I, we feel like we can compete in the 5A level and be in, and, and um, you know, it, and it's a testament to these guys that are sitting here beside me. I, I, I want to emphasize that as much as I possibly can. These guys had every reason at times last year to just throw the hands up and, and walk away, but they didn't. They kept battling, they kept fighting. Again, you know, we were we lost four of our starting five offensive linemen through the year last year. Um, you know, this guy, he was a lineman. I mean, he was a, a you know played linebacker all year, and all of a sudden, week six, he's having to be a, a, a starting guard that hadn't played it since he was in the eighth grade, I think. You know, we had our center, uh, Dalton Hillman, um, that, that played center the last three or four ball games of the year. You know, Dalton had absolutely zero business playing as a center at, at, at the 6A level. He's 5'9", 5'10", 150 pounds at best, but he was, but he was doing it. You know, he, he, he didn't care. So um, we get all those guys back. You know, we, we not only did we replace those guys, we get those guys that we replaced back. We were so young. So we get all of our linemen that started the year last year, plus their replacements are coming back. So we replaced 
underclassmen with underclassmen. So now they are all upperclassmen, and and um, you know, and it, 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 I don't care what what level of football it is, it all starts on the offensive and defensive line. And that's where we feel like we are a, are a strength. Um, and we've just got to, you know, we're, we're learning new systems and so forth. And, we, you know, once we get that down pat, I think we'll be okay. Coach, you talked about dropping back down to 5A. Typically, we know you guys play better in 5A than 6A. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, going into your fifth year. Talk about your coaching staff. Any changes? Any additions? <laughs> I don't have time. Um, we, no, we we have basically gutted it. it. It's it's for one reason or another. It was you know for either reasons for you know guys wanting to get out and go to other places. Um, we've got two guys that stayed in county. We've got two guys that left and are out of county. Um, we replaced them. Um, the offensive coordinator um, is going to be Kyle Davis. Kyle used to be the head football coach at Atmore um, and was the head coach up at West End High School in North Alabama. Um, we worked together when we were at Atmore together. And um, we always kind of joked that one day we would get the band back together like Jake and Elwood. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, but we, 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 you know, we talked about it. The, the, the opportunity presented itself, and we got Kyle to come down and, and, and be our offensive coordinator. And we're extremely excited about that. Um, defensive coordinator, again, uh, change there. Um, uh, Skylar Mosley is going to be our defense coordinator. Skylar was at uh, Jackson High School last year. He's been at Sarah Land. He's been at uh, Jackson Academy. Um, he's a young guy, um, but I, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't think this room is big enough to keep him in it when he gets excited. Um, he's just that guy. Um, these guys are feeding off of it, and it's, it's, it's really a neat experience to watch practice now, uh, especially from the defensive side, because that's, that's my background. Um, and, and seeing the excitement and, the, and so forth out of those guys on the defensive side. Coach, you got nine <laughs> returning offensive linemen. Yes. You have Justin Evans, probably the best returning quarterback uh, in this region. And uh, Don't tell anybody that. Oh, my man. Don't tell everybody just, that. <laughs> just, you know, just talk about, you know, the linemen, and especially the one that's getting recruited as a junior. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just talk about that. Sure. That, you know, that yeah, Justin, and again, I can't talk enough about Justin Adams, our quarterback. Justin started as a freshman. Um, and, and the last, I think it was the last three games of that 19, or 20 season, excuse me, he started uh, three games. And um, to throw him into the Wolves against that, I mean, a Spanish Fort, Sarah Land, and so forth in those last couple of games that year. And he, 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 you know, competed and, and was was really good. Last year, he got some injuries that, you know, hampered him through the year. Um, every now and again, he hurt his knee against uh, Robertsdale week two, uh, stepped in a hole on the sideline. And uh, we were rolling at that point. And he stepped in a hole and has hyperextended his knee and never was exactly the same again through the year. But he battled through it again. I have my, my the utmost respect for these guys because, again, there was a lot of times last year that you just looked around and said, what's next? You know, what is going to happen next? And, uh, and they could have thrown their hands up, but they didn't. And so with Justin, you know, his progression is going to only get better. Um, I'm ex we're, we're all excited about it. He made throws yesterday. We were, we were doing team stuff yesterday. And uh, he made some throws yesterday that were big boy throws. And, um, you know, we were all excited, you know, and I just stood back and, you know, I had a – a chest our grin on my face, but anyway, chest our cat. But, um, but it was fun to see it. Um, these linemen, you know, they, I, I can't again. They they sit there and, and you know they're the quiet bunch. You know they don't say anything. They don't do. It. But the problem is on our group they do. They're the loud bunch, and it's funny because we were again we were doing seven on seven yesterday, um, and the linemen were actually inside doing the weight stuff. And when they came out, it was like the whole team went completely different, you know, and they weren't even competing. They were, we were doing seven on seven. They came out and the whole thing lit up, you know, so they're, they're a great group. Um, again, Matt Davis, uh, uh, Tristan Schwartz, Tristan broke his hand and against Robertsdale, our center. Um, we went through three or four centers last year. Um, uh, Matt Davis, Matt was our starting uh, right guard. He, t he hurt his knee. Uh, we lost him for the year. Um, uh, we've got uh, Cal and Reed and Ivy Rivers. We're trying to decide who's going to be that guy at guard and center with those, out of the, the three of those with Tristan. And then Bryce Kaiser. Bryce is the only one. Bryce is a junior. Uh, Bryce is the only kid that started every single down for us last year. 
Uh, he's six four ish. You know, he's he's borderline six five and and weighs uh he weighs two seventy something, but he looks like he weighs two ten. You know, he, he's he's skinny to if you look at him from a distance. Um, he's going to carry a lot more weight, and he and he moves so well for a big guy. Um, so we're you know he's he's and he's got a little mean streak to him. He's got a mean streak, and I'll be honest with you, this one right here beside me is is has has really got a mean streak. I have to hold him back during the spring game. Um, the officials came over and said, "Look, you you got to tell fifty to hold, uh, uh, calm it down a little bit," you know. And I I, I I'm here, you know. So, uh, but you know, I, but it's hard to tell a guy quit being physical, you know, and that kind of thing. And so, but uh, we're, we're like again, I, I can't say enough about our linemen. Having that head coach Kyle Davis on the staff, what type of relief does he bring to you? I'm here right now, and that's the thing. I can be away. Um, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's it's a great thing, um, and, and I, I I laugh about it all the time. But you know, Kyle and I, we've always been really good friends. Not just from a coaching side of it, but we've always been really good friends. And so it was kind of that we, we joke about the yin and the yang thing, you know. Um, and he's the offense, I'm the defense, and we just yin and yang. But um, but having him has been has paid dividends. You know, we, we talk about different things all day long. Um, and and taking that experience that he had, he's got uh, you know over I think it's almost 15 years of head coaching experience. So having that knowledge on our staff is absolutely invaluable. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm telling you, those days when we were at Atmore, were uh, we were in a, and that's what I, it's, I use this a lot, and it's hard to if you think back on it. But my first two years at Atmore, we were four A, and um, we were we made the playoffs both years, um, hosted a playoff game the second year we were there. Um, blah blah blah. Where we're at, you know, and I graduated from Atmore. We were a bad football program, if you remember back from about '94. Through 2014, I mean, you know, not that long, but it was a long time. It was a bad, bad thing. So we get in there, and my first year at Atmore as a DC, we beat Taylor Miller for the first time in 15 years, um, and so forth. We were we were rolling, we were rolling at that point, and then guess what? We get bumped up to 5A, and we struggle. We went three and seven and two and eight, I think, those last two years, and um, then we drop back to 4A, and we go to the third round that year. So it's a, you know, I look at this and I'm hoping, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but the similarities are really weird and shocking because those years that we were two and eight and three and seven and that more back then, we were playing youngins and getting ready to make a run if we did ever drop back down. And that's what we've kind of set this up with again for them. So we just kept praying and telling them, look, you know, there's better days coming, I hope. Um, let's just keep working, and, and, and things will get better for us. One of those better days may be a Walmart coming to Centronia. You mentioned the your last year. That, it, 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 <laughs> that would be not. We, we are getting a Jax. Okay, we are okay, getting okay, a Jax. Okay, okay. So we're excited. Okay, breakfast, yes. okay. breakfast. you got a new spot. Breakfast is not going to be the same anymore in, in Centronia. That's right. Ooh, that's right. All right. Hi, Coach. All right. All right, we'll get some of your guys. Sure, here. absolutely. Garrett, you can start right here, bud. <laughs> Who was that guy that came last year talking about the Walmart? That was uh, Lathan. Oh, okay. That was Lathan Farmer, our, our, one of our linebackers. Yeah. yeah. Then it wasn't the town unless you had a Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that now. Yep. Garrett, talk about your expectations for this year. Well, um, after the past two years, only way we can look is up. I mean, we were we were the underdogs all all year the past two years. Um. We're looking forward this year. Um, we're a lot better physically. Um, the past few years, we've just seen people's maxes jump 50, 60 pounds over the past two years. So the physical aspect of it, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually be dominant on the field. Um, I think we compete with anybody. The only, only people we have to compete with this year is ourselves. The day I came up there and Coach was in the, in the field house, and he was in the weight room, and you got the weight started. I saw that as being a leader. What type of leader do you want to be this season? Um, all around. I, I know every position on the defense. I know what they do, when they do it, in any coverage. Um, also, in the weight room, I, I try and be the leader in there. And even even spiritually. Uh, I know at the end of practice, yeah. 
I've prayed over everybody, and that's just the leader I want to be. I want to be, if somebody's got something going on at home they're struggling with, I want to be the guy that they can come talk to. If they're struggling with feel, not knowing what to do, I want to be the guy they can come talk to. So that's that's what I want to be. Talk about that GPA and that ACT score. Um, I'm sitting at a 4.0 GPA. Um, I'm also in an honor, so it's weighted. It's, it's even higher, but I have a 30 super score on ACT. So worked hard with that. Our coaches help. Um, they do ACT tutoring during the summers. So it's, it's a big advantage having that for us. Garrett, you guys have a great game day atmosphere. Probably, I'm going to say, probably one of the second most beautiful turfs in the area. You guys take care of the grass very well. How can we hear those air horns blow a little more this season uh, on top of the press box for me and Corey? I mean, y'all get them going, scoring. What, what, what does the team need to do? Um, like I said, our fan atmosphere has always been good, even the away games. We, we have just a bunch of people from the community come. Um, like I said, our physical aspect, our linemen are going to be really good this year. So our offense, I expect to just steamroll over people, honestly, run game and pass game. So I think those air horns are going to be going off at least twice a quarter. All right. What, is, what is it like playing at Centronelle High School? Talk about that experience. At Centronelle, we've always been the people that we're kind of looked down on just because a lot of our athletes go other places. Um, but honestly, I, I like the feeling of underdog. I like being that, that person that if I'm doubted, I like proving people wrong. So that's that's the whole Citronel citron mentality, is that we're here to prove people wrong. You feel like this is, could be a playoff team this year now that y'all are back in 5A? Um, I, I do. I, I, I really do. If we can win our first few games just to get the momentum built up for when we get into area play, I feel like this team could actually be something special. What game do you have circled on this one? Um, uh, has been talking a little bit, but they're, they're, they're not necessarily my concern. Um, it'll probably be UMS. UMS is probably mine. Just because they, they don't honestly have the best athletes in the world. They're just a fundamental team, and I feel like that's, that's what we're going to be the best to compete against. Ready to steamroll them? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, Mike, we'll make Coach Curtis, I'm sorry. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Uh, stronger ground attack or air attack? Honestly, um, running our seven on sevens and our team, uh, our, our starting running back for the past few years, uh, unfortunately, won't be with us this year. So. With our, our quarterback and a few of our receivers, one of them's injured right now, but he's coming back. He's he's, he's really good. I, I feel like we're going to be more of a pass-heavy team, honestly. But that is not knocking our run game. We have a very good run game that I'm looking forward to to, to using. All right, Garrett. Appreciate it, man. Very good. Miss Gunner. Yes, sir. Ben, what are your expectations for the year? Uh, I just want to see everybody grow and do what I know they can do. And I don't know if that's on the field or off the field, but I know that we have a great group of people with us, and I know that they have great things ahead of us. How has Coach Davis changed some things around here? He's really just – it's simpler, honestly. It's easier to understand. And you can do a lot more with less things. And it's it's less happening. I like it. Garrett said y'all gonna be steamrolling folks. So yes, on this sir. offensive line, what what kind of goals or expectations have you have you guys as a group come together to say what oh. what you wanna steamroll them too? Yes, sir. We wanna be we wanna be the bullies. You know okay. what I mean? We want to we set the tone for everything and we wanna set the best one. Having nine returning linemen, boy, you know, if you get tired now, you know somebody oh, yeah. quality can come in and, and, and replace you. How is that an advantage for you guys? Well, we're always competing, and that's really what it drives us all. And we know that your spot is not guaranteed. You're always fighting the guy behind you. And everybody's got playing experience, and it's everybody's got a chance. When, when Coach has to calm you down, it, is it, uh, I assume it's probably not that docile a tone he used. <laughs> 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 
It depends well, on what happens. Yeah, it, <laughs> it depends on it depends on how things are going. Now, a practice field, you got a new practice field. Yes. How how important is having that new turf on the field? It just it makes you want to work harder because you see all the work that they're putting in on things to make make it better for us. You want to put out better product for for coach and the rest of the coach and the community. How how motivated are y'all to get to the postseason this year after um, the last two years? After taking what we've took the last two years and everything that's happened, we have it on our backs. We're ready to go. Thanks for taking off work today. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the defensive backfield. How y'all gonna be back there? Well, we did lose one guy. It was Jairus Benjamin last year. He broke his collarbone, but he's returning. We still have Ben Brown. Now we have a new safety, Sonny Bird, which he he's gonna be doing good. You know, we still help him with some, helping him be more physical. And Looking, not so much looking at the quarterback, just looking in his area, so where he needs to be. When you uh, when you're on defense in practice, do you see these guys steamrolling oh, people yeah. in front of you? Or? Oh yeah, I hear gunner all the time, all the time. You just get out of the way, or you take them on when they get back there. If they come at me, I'm gonna take them on. <laughs> what are some of your strengths as a defensive back that you possess that you want to kind of take to the next level and really, really show what you have this season? What stands out in your game? My coverage. Mm -hmm. My coverage spot. Last year it wasn't so good, but I feel like during all season I most definitely got it higher. Like, Mike, remember my Spanish fort game? Terrible. Got beat like 40 yards. And, you know, I learned from that. It really didn't happen again because, like I said, I learned from it. And my speed was not so much looking at the quarterback because when I got burnt, I was staring at the quarterback, and now I got my eyes off him and you know working on my zone, getting low and backpedaling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk a little bit about how the defense is a little bit more simpler now with the new defense coordinator. He honestly makes everything so much easier. He made it so much easier for me, and not just me, like Garrett, all the linemen, linebackers safeties. It's like last year it was more complicated and more hard to like remember something. But this year is way more easier, more relaxed really. <laughs> what does Coach Barnett mean to you? It means a lot. Honestly. Like when I agree, yeah, I honestly never thought I would have been starting on a varsity team. And me and Coach Barnett, we started to get closer and closer as I start to get, you know, more into football. Because my anger, yeah, I went for sure if I was going to continue playing. But then for some reason, I just got that hope and then saw, he, saw how he was coaching the players and how he was there and wanting to work with them and all that. And I was like, well, that, you know, that made me honestly stay. I never told him about that, but that honestly made me want to stay. As a young man interning at the Steel Mill, what are you taking from that internship to apply to your game and help your teammates get better Hard that work. work mentality? Hard work. Through the heat, through the cold, through the rain, mm -hmm. continue hurt, working hard no matter what the circumstances are. I get the feeling you guys haven't taken some licks over the last two years in 6A, just got mad and are ready to take it out. That, that seems to be the underlying uh, theme here. <laughs> I got mad a lot too. Uh, it's it's a difficult situation in that in that deal, you know. And, and I can say it. I I I have all the respect in the world for these guys and, and, and the guys before them, you know, even that, um, and, and the guys behind them that, that that went through what we've gone through. Uh, I'm telling you, there was a lot of days that you know you sat there on Thursday afternoon and. and we never could let them know this, but you know, you looked at the film and you said, you know, we did all we could do during practice all week long. But on Thursday night, when you went to the house, you told your wife, 
Baby, I'm sorry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, and, and you know, and, and, and you know, I hope that they, I hope they show up and just, you know, keep us in it. You know, keep it, keep us in the game for a while. You know, and um, and 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 they did. They did that a lot of times. And then once the the injuries started happening, it just, you know, it, I I heard Coach French a while ago talking about the depth of it. You know, they've got five or six guys that are going to go both ways. And, you know, we've got a couple of guys that are going to do that as well. But the thing that's not, that, that that's the difference between what that is, what he's talking about, and what we're dealing with now is, okay, Spanish Fort, Sarah Lamb, Blunt, whatever, um, those five or six are guys that have been sitting over there hanging out. And they just replaced them with five or six new guys and quality new guys. So the depth of it is what makes the difference to me um, from between a five and a six or a four and a five even, you know. And so um, you know, that's the thing. I, I, I've said it all along. Our 22, our first 22 are as good as anybody. It's the 23 through 40 that we, we struggle, you know, where everybody else in the last two years have had those guys. So that's the difference, and I hope that, you know, once we, once we get going, and, and they've got to learn to win again. That's the other biggest thing for us is letting these guys win ball games. They've got to get some success, and Garrett talked about it real quick, that we've got to have some success early. And once they do and learn how to win again, I think that the, you know, the, the sky's the limit once we figure that out. All right, guys, Coach, thank you for coming. Thank you all, all for having us. Here. Thank you all so much for what you all do for us and for high school football around here, believe me.